So I did a random tweet the other day and not in my wildest dreams did I ever think I'd get the reaction that I did. It did over 1.8 million views, which is absolute nonsense. And look, I get it's the new X analytics system who absolutely knows, but I do know it took over my entire social media for a few days, but that's badass. Cause what we can do now is I have two videos that will be coming live. And on this one, some actual wrestlers did reply to me with their wrestling hot takes, which is what I asked for. Listen, if you're a wrestler, I'm going to talk about you because I think that's cool because I'm a nerd. So I'm basically going to do it in the order that they were sent to me. And look, there are some people that are performing on television right now that got involved with this. So I do want to say thank you because again, I do think it's really cool. But we shall start on the British independent scene and my man, Big Wavy Roy Johnson, who you should also check out. I had a match with him at Sovereign Pro Wrestling like a month ago or so. I mean, he beat me, gave me a 3D or a 1D, whatever it call it these days to get the 1, 2, 3. Shout out to his tag team partner, Roth, as well. And he said every wrestling show should have a squash match. Squash match wrestling is its own special wrestling style and should be treated as such you know what i do agree with that maybe not every single wrestling show but i do think the squash match in general has kind of gone away and look i've been guilty of this too i think sometimes we do roll our eyes at it now it actually ties into something that i did on a wrestling show once i won't drop any names just in case people don't want to be talked about but my job was to get somebody else over and i kept being told like wwe and roman reigns circa 2016 oh my gosh we have to get this guy over we have to make sure this guy looks really strong so i was like well, why doesn't he just beat me in a minute and there was a little bit of resistance there. There's people were like, we can't do that on an independent wrestling show. But we did do it. And because it was so different to everything else on the card, it did get a reaction and people couldn't believe it. It's why if you do go to an independent show, for example, you shouldn't always expect every match to be 15 minute plus. Because if one goes five minutes, it's just going to give you a little bit of a shot of adrenaline. So yes, I do agree with that. We should have more squash matches. And if somebody wants to squash me on national television, I'll be there. Moving on to, this is nuts, Matt Cardona replied. <laughs> five million years. I don't think that was going to happen, but I see what he's doing here. Because he wrote, Simon Miller is the NWO Alexander Swagger in the last match musical. Now, we haven't actually talked about this on this channel yet. A video is going up soon. But in around about a month's time, I am flying out to the United States of America. And I'm going to be part of the last match musical, which you may remember from WrestleMania 39 weekend. It is now going on a tour. And it is essentially a theater production, a musical production, an acting production, and a wrestling production all in one. And I am indeed playing the role of Alexander Swagger, which Matt Cardona did when it did its initial first few shows in 2023. It's totally bonkers. I don't know how I've done this. I'm equal parts excited and terrified as all the best things in life usually make you feel. So I presume what he's saying there is it's like the NWO version of Sting, which means it's not as good. So thanks very much, Matt Cardona. Did all the world good to my confidence. We also had smart Mark Sterling, who of course is in AEW right now and other places. And he kept things very straightforward. He said, smart Mark Sterling is the greatest lawyer in the history of professional wrestling. And it's not even close. I mean, the only other lawyer I can think of is Luca or Lusa Crucifino at NXT. Is there any other lawyers? I don't know. He did say in professional wrestling, which probably means the greatest lawyer of all time is still Lionel Hutz from The Simpsons. But shout out to Mark Sterling. You win. People Mike Bailey also weighed in, which is just so damn cool. And as always, Mike Bailey, who is one of the greatest wrestlers on the planet right now, just sees pro wrestling in such a cool way. And look, way back when, this is before the pandemic, he was actually on a show that I was doing and he gave me great feedback because he's just that kind of a dude. And he said, outside of weekly episodic story-driven televised pro wrestling, moves have no inherent value but on how they're built and sold during a match itself. If done well, a clothesline can still be a finish, even if everyone does two in their comeback, say for cutters, super kicks, etc. Now look, I I said this to Mike Bailey too. Do I have it here? That's right. He said this. He also added, I apologize if it doesn't count as a hot take because it's too objectively correct. And I just went again, no, you're right, Mike. It's just a correct observation on wrestling because he is right. And this is why he's so good at what he does. He views it in a very unique way, but it's a way that more of us should look at it. And again, it's kind of this argument that what are moves without story and what are moves without meaning, etc. You can manipulate them in whatever way that you want. And on the off chance, this can't be true. You've never seen a speedball Mike Bailey match. That's probably what you should change today. My man Chris Van Vliet also jumped in there. Always like talking to Chris and he said, liking one wrestling company doesn't mean you need to hate the other one. Now that shouldn't be a hot take, but it kind of is a hot take. I still get this. Obviously do the ups and downs on what culture. Make sure you subscribe to them. But if I give 
even not that many downs. I gave Raw three downs this week. I gave it nine ups, which means I enjoyed the show. And yes, I've been looking for more downs recently, just to add a little bit more balance. I got absolutely flambasted for that, which is so dumb. I love all professional wrestling. If I could, I'd just keep everything up because I think wrestling is a wonderful treat. And that goes for AEW, WWE, Ring of Honor, New Japan, Impact TNA, whatever the hell, man. I don't care. There's no tribalism in me. I want wrestlers to get paid loads of money. I want wrestlers to live their dreams. I want wrestlers to have a good time. And I want to be presented with all forms of pro wrestling at all times. Sometimes I won't like it. That's great. Because wrestling isn't made for me. The real thing that gets me mad, I didn't like this. So now I'm going to go shib on somebody else's enjoyment. You should not do that. It's not cool. So I agree with Chris. Jordan Grace also weighed in. You know, the TNA Knockouts champion. I'm such a nerd. It's ridiculous. Somebody messaged me the other day. Go, Miller, you're such a mark. I'm like, of course I'm a mark. Have you seen what I do for a living? I should change my damn name. She said, somebody hitting a move that somebody else does as a finisher and not winning with it does not devalue the move. It just means the person using the move as a finisher does it better. Now look. I got 7.5 thousand likes, which is a damn amazing amount of likes. I didn't know that people thought the other way. Of course, that's the whole point. So if Steve Austin hits the rock bottom on the rock, he shouldn't be able to win with it. When the rock hits the rock bottom, he's mastered that move. And that's why it's his finishing move. So I suppose this was one of the cool things about putting that tweet out there. I learned that some people... <laughs> Do go, oh, uh, he applied the sharpshooter where the person didn't tap. Therefore, it's a crappy move. One, silly thing to think. Two, do know it's all predetermined, right? You can do whatever the flub you want. But thank you to Jordine. She's awesome as well. Remember her Royal Rumble appearance? Rule. I mean, Jordan also weighed in, a great British professional wrestler. He was at NXT UK for a while before, very sadly, NXT UK closed its doors. But he said, promotions running in the same town. This is very UK. I love it. Promotions running in the same town, telling talent they can't work for the other when the local roster pool isn't near deep enough to keep the quality up. Let the talent make money for them and you. Leave the beef to one side and you'll make better shows and more money, dum-dums. <laughs> I didn't read that last bit. Amir is a wonderful person and a great wrestler who you should also check out youtube him or twitter him whatever the hell find him on social media i think he's doing a tour of canada at the moment which is very cool sadly i'm sure this does happen in america as well and all places on planet earth but yes it's tiny areas of the uk where you can't work for them and you did and now we're not going to book you we really should just all get along right there is a big enough of a pie to go around if you do work together to create bigger shows maybe you can get some kind of a synergy and go from there but you know it is politics whether you're at the very very top or the very very bomb so my gotch just had a wonderful <laughs> response he responded with the it's a trap star wars meme I didn't mean it as a trap, but he's 100% right. But also, that Simon Gotch shoots video. That was like a trap too. I am, of course, kidding. Diff Deland also weighed in, and she said, there are many wrestlers who can competently execute impressive wrestling moves. There are few wrestlers who know how to create a meaningful connection with their fan base. Now, once again, this is the forever conversation, and she's 100% right. The latter is always going to be more important because you can do all the moves in the world, but if you can't connect to somebody, then you're not going to care, right? If I give you the world's best ice cream, but it's not the flavor that you enjoy the most, you're not going Going to like it as much i suppose this could be one of the reasons why will osprey is one of the best wrestlers in the world because he can do all of the moves amazingly mostly better than everybody else but he actually makes people believe as well there's definitely a connection between the fan base and will and the audience connection is always something that i've tried to strive for the most bit in the wrestling ring or here doing those videos so yeah i think that's where the money is i suppose if you go through all your favorite wrestling moments i mean it could be something like an amazing spanish fly but nine times out of ten it's going to be this person winning a title or this kind of story uh peaking whatever it may be so you know surprise surprise i'm agreeing with all of them rj singh also weighed in an absolute veteran a legend of the uk scene and the ddt king he loves his ddts and he says if you hit seven moves in a row on your opponent and then they kick out two your moves were pointless I mean, it's kind of true. Actually, I, someone said this to me the other day, and it's, it's very, very accurate. There's no point a big guy laying in five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten punches and the other person not dropping, because all you're telling the audience is that your punches don't mean anything. Whereas if someone peppers you, peppers you, peppers you, and then you smack them back once and they fall down, well, people are going to think you a badass. Wrestling really is that simple. Matthew Raywell also joined the fray as well, which is so cool. And this one totally blew up as well. He said, not enough wrestlers bring their pet cats backstage. Everybody and their brother 
brings a dog that everybody fawns over. We want kitties. WWK, which could also be a name of a promotion. You see why I was enjoying the weekend so much. I just thought I'd get a few people replying with crazy things. And don't worry, that's on the second video. <laughs> Lots of people did reply with that. When you actually talk to real wrestlers, terrible, terrible term, you know what I'm saying. And some of these people I have interacted with in my own life. Well, it's just cool. And once again, if that makes me a geek, great. I like being a geek. Trent, he of AW fame, also decided to add something. And we've got points here, which is always cool. One, everyone who replied to this is an annoying person. Two, slaps are the most dangerous move in wrestling. Good argument. And three, you guys are nerds. <laughs> I don't like any of you. And I'm going to let you see my reply too, because I said one, agreed. Two, agreed. Three, it hurts, but agreed. I mean, we've just talked about it. We are, are massive nerds, but isn't it just great? That tweet genuinely made me laugh. Masafa Ali went the complete opposite direction as well because he really did bring some interesting stuff to the conversation because he said representation is only promoted when profitable. Now, look, if anyone is going to be able to speak from an educated platform about that, it would be somebody like Mustafa Ali. I mean, you've seen, well, not only some of the gimmicks he's wanted to portray on TV and may not be able to, but there's also other stories out there where people wanted to play a stereotypical character. And he's like, no, I don't want to do it. Again, I don't want to speak on things that maybe I'm not totally aware of, but it is out there on the internet and you can see it. Of course, we don't have all the details, but very sadly, that probably is true in professional wrestling, and it's true on a greater scale as well. And do not forget that representation is the most important thing. Because when you have kids of all genders, sexes, races, whatever it may be, and they're into professional wrestling, if they can see someone that looks like them, talks like them, has the same background of them, whatever it you know could be, that is going to inspire them to try and follow in that person's footsteps. And that's why that's the real reason you need to make sure that we are reaching out to any kind of community or whatever it may be. Because people need to feel that way. I remember I felt that way and it basically shaped my entire life and everybody absolutely deserves the opportunity and they deserve that privilege. Now, not my wildest dreams that I think we're ever going to get this serious, but I'm glad that we did. Big Bad Kaiju weighed in as well, the one true king on the, on the old social media. And he said, this is the wrestling business. And he's shouting business as well. So you better listen. And businesses do two things. They follow the money to make the money. They don't care about your tweets, your ethics or morals. We ain't your friends. It's about the almighty dollar. It always has been and always will be. Now that will make you go lay down. And question your own existence. But once again, are you going to argue it? There's a lot of evidence out there. Shout out to Denise Salcedo as well, who I always enjoy talking to. And she, I think, this is why I loved it so much. The 180s of the wrestling shows should never be held in venues without cup holders in the seats. Denise, you are damn right. And we should start some kind of riot club today to make sure it happens. And amazingly, that was it. I like ending on that one because it's totally silly, but also makes a really good point. So thank you to everyone for interacting with that. Like I say, it put a massive smile on my face. And don't worry, I have got a bunch of your guys that will go through much quicker. And that video will be coming out later in the week. And that one is probably going to have to have some kind of a warning. Some of them were truly offensive. They're not featured in the video and they're not funny. But I just genuinely did read some like, Oh no, what have I done? I regret all of this. It's okay to be nice, you know. Not everything has to be fire and brimstone. Who are you, Kane? No. Now, of course, please do interact with the video. Click the video that is on the screen right now. Like the video, share the video, and some. smash that notification bell so you know what other videos are going live. If you want to do your fitness, it's grillandmind.com forward slash Simon. Just go to Simon to get money off. That's always good to get money off. And these are the best supplements as far as I am concerned. Patreon.com forward slash Simon316. It's Simon316 on social media in case I do another of these. I'd love for you to join in. Simon J. Miller on TikTok. Simon Miller on Cameo. Pro Wrestling Tees and Sam's Athletics for Merchandise. And that's that. Once again, thank you to all the wrestlers that did join in. It kind of made me feel like I was part of the community. And once again, it's a dumb thing to say. And I watch this back when I'm editing it. I feel like an absolute goober. But I am, man. I am a goober. And I'm going to ride that train to Goober Town. It's a lovely place to be. Goodbye.